sweet, like white sugar. Hidden in the gaps of your teeth. Imagine you're nine years old and at a birthday party. You're holding a paper plate. And a plastic fork. And somebody told you that you can't eat the cake. Or marshmallows, chocolates, or jellies. There's a unicorn and a princess on your plate. You're not allowed to eat this. Everyone around you is cutting slices of creamy white cake. You can taste the mushy icing on your lips. You're not allowed to eat this. You've done this before. But without the restrictions. But you didn't slice. You grabbed. You clutched onto your plate. You snatched. You didn't sit down. You kept shoving. You grabbed. You didn't stop to choke. You kept going. Until everyone around you saw. You had cake wedged between your fingers. Lodged in your gums. Gooey in your stomach. But you continued to snatch. You continued to grab. Until someone told you to stop. I'm not full. When you got home. That's all you can talk about. Your parents start dreaming about white cake from your family. You're lying in bed and you can feel the cake wedge between your fingers. You can taste it dissolving on your tongue. It tastes sweet. Like wet sugar. Hidden in the gaps of your teeth. Hey guys, it's Ailey the foodie here. Hey guys, it's Molly the TV lover. Hey guys, it's Ailey the mad twat. Hey guys, so <laughs> update on my life. When I finished my shift at the chipper, I drove home, got on my sweatpants and ordered from my favorite Chinese restaurant. All you lovelies, listen to this. You're not gonna believe this. This is so funny. So I've been binge watching that show, Wedding Disasters. Have you seen it? Oh, it's so good. Uh, hey guys, it's Aiden here. So I promised myself that tonight I would knuckle down and study. But then George calls me up, tells me that O'Reilly's are serving free drinks until 10. Free drinks! <laughs> Comment below. They all know me there already. On Friday, I ordered the full Crispy, delicious, aromatic duck with a side of Chinese pancakes, spare ribs, and vegetable spring rolls. Oh, and my usual. You know the one where the bride doesn't know that her man is planning the entire wedding by himself? Herself is walking around thinking that she has weeks before the wedding, but her fiance is gonna surprise her in like three days with a priest and everything. Leave a comment below if you watch the show. I am all in. I tell George to get his ass down there now. Get the best seat in the house and get ready for the best night of our lives. George slows me down, says it's half two in the afternoon. Free drinks, George, I say. <laughs> he laughs at me. Why didn't he want to go for a drink now? My throat was scratching me something fierce. This pissed me off. George says, well, it's not open until eight. I hang up on him, start flicking through my biomedical paper. Fucking George. He starts calling me again, but I cancel his call. He pissed me off. He was laughing at me. Tom, the delivery guy, brings me my food on Thursdays and Fridays and jokes that I must be having a huge house party. I reply with, you must be having a laugh. I'm eating all this food all by myself. Tom is shocked. He says, that's impressive. I say, I know. <laughs> so, I started watching the first season, and then I began the second, and then the third, and then the fourth. You know, I just couldn't help myself. And sometimes, there are double episodes, and I can't be left on a cliffhanger. No, it drives me insane. It's all I can think about until I can watch the next episode. Sometimes it's months, years even. So anyway, I was binge watching episode 14, season 10. Might I add, great stuff. <laughs> and suddenly, my second phone rings, and I'm pissed because it's right before Carol is about to scream the house down when she realizes her fiancé Patrick has bought her an orange wedding suit. Ugh. So, I pick up the phone, about to roar at this person, but then I realize it's my boss. He keeps going on and on about how I haven't been in on time, and maybe sometimes haven't showed up. You know, all this crap that I'm not interested in hearing. I'm staring at the paused image of Carol mid-scream on my laptop, just waiting for him to stop nagging at me so I could start watching my show again. When he finally does stop, I mumble all the right things to say and I tell him I'll be in tomorrow early, ready to sell burritos. <laughs> all this crap, he ate it all up. But the thing is, that was last week. <laughs> I completely forgot I had a shift the next morning at 9 a.m. It wasn't my fault though, because there was a 3 a.m. live screening of Wedding Disasters from LA. I couldn't have missed it, are you mad? I wouldn't have been able to see it for like another three months or something. So, my boss got onto me this week and you'll never believe this, but like, he fired me. 
Well, now I have more time to watch the politician. Have any of you guys seen this? I'm going to be doing a reaction video soon. <laughs> My throat felt like sand. My phone started to buzz again, but I was busy looking under my bed for a bottle or two. Nothing. My phone continued to buzz. Piss off, George! I don't need this shit! Right now, I went into the kitchen. Checked. Nothing. My phone was still buzzing in the other room, so I went in and I turned it off. I stared at my research assignment. 6,000 words. Fuck. Wait. Maybe George was calling me back to say that O'Reilly's were open. That he'd meet me down there. That he was only messing, yeah. <laughs> I, I stuck on my shoes. I ran straight out the door. Didn't even bother turning on my phone. I knew I was right. George is such a dick. <laughs> Comment if you agree. Now because you are not going to believe what I just got. The Triple XL McDonald's King Box! Oh yes! It comes with a six patty burger, which apparently is impossible to finish. <laughs> I've uploaded a selfie with this on my Instagram, so Check that out. Oh, it also comes with a bucket of onion rings, a bucket of fries, and a king size McFlurry. Stay tuned, guys. Dessert is on its way. <laughs> oh, shit. I got ketchup on my phone. Okay, bye. So I get down there. And O'Reilly's is closed. There's a sign saying that it won't be open until 8 o'clock, the bastards. <laughs> I'm about to turn on my phone when I think of something. George was messing with me. He just wanted to meet me in another pub. Our favourite pub. Mickey's. So I go down there. No sign of George yet, so I get myself a pint. An ice cold pint. That slips down my throat. There's no one else there, except for an old man taking a nap at the bar. He's got a couple of empty glasses making a halo around his head, the poor bastard. Still no sign of George, so I get myself another pint. And then another, and then another. I was thirsty. And then I turn on my phone. Twenty missed calls. No messages. So I call George back, tell him to get his ass down here now. George says, well, I have to go to class. He wants to go to class? With his new friends. His new history friends instead of me. I tell him he's a shit friend. They shouldn't make plans with me and cancel. George gets upset. So I hang up on him. Fucking George. Get myself another pint. How can he fucking do this? You're a shit jet friend, George. Do you hear me? Do you? Netflix keeps asking me if I'm still here. <laughs> Where does Netflix think I am? So I'm live streaming now because I've been kicked out of Mickey's. But I've managed to get myself a liter of vodka from the off license down the Sorry, Jesus. <laughs> I'm gonna play a drinking game with all of you. I'm gonna down a shot of vodka for every time that George pissed me off tonight. What do you say? Woo! Yeah! 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 I knew you'd like this! <laughs> It's Aileen here. You're not gonna believe who just contacted me. McDonald's! <laughs> they said if you type in Aileen Foodie into the discount box, you get 20% off the Triple XL McDonald's King box. Shh. Oh shit. A nurse just shushed me. <laughs> so, order now, guys, and send me your selfies with the hashtag Aileen Thanks! <laughs> I woke up this morning covered in pink cake and stale beer. My head throbbed, but I made myself sit up. I
stared at the ground. And there was pink icing and sponge cake lodged in between my toes, like a fungus. What the fuck happened? <laughs> I looked around the room and saw that there was a drawing of a unicorn scribbled across the wall in pink marker. Where the fuck was I? I needed to get out of here. I didn't stop to see if anyone was there. I grabbed my coat and I ran out the door and was hit by the wind of the Liffey. Jesus! <laughs> I grabbed the wrong jacket. I was wearing this giant, pink, fuzzy-looking fucker. Oh, but the wind was cutting right through my lungs, so I kept it on. No harm done. I bet I pulled it off with my figure. <laughs> Comment if you agree. <laughs> I don't like it when Netflix keeps asking me if I'm still here. I mean, it's obvious that I'm watching. Why does that have to remind me or even be a concern that I'm watching? I'm just a little miffed at Netflix asking me questions like that. I'm allowed to watch as many goddamn episodes as I want! I pay the fucking fees, Netflix! <laughs> As I walked along the docks, my head began to pulse. I took out my phone. 7.35 a.m. Jesus, my dad's gonna kill me. I got a little embarrassed. I ignored the mothers and fathers walking their chickens to school. I was a little irked, a little angry then. I ignored the goo-goo and gaga of toddlers waddling after seagulls. I ignored the man jogging in his bright yellow jacket. I ignored the businessmen scoffing on flaky croissants. I still had fucking cake in my shoes. I was embarrassed. I was irked. I was angry. I could feel the alcohol sludge through my arms and legs and into my stomach. Feel the pull. I get it. Okay. I get it! I stared at the ground. Walked faster. I looked at the puffs of grass bursting out of the pavements. Dandelions. Don't dandelions clear your liver. I, I could eat it. C clear me out. I grabbed a handful of dandelions. Stared at the weeds in my hand, the roots dangling down my arm. It looked like I was going somewhere, going to see someone, going to see my dad. <laughs> this will clear me out. This will clear me right up. There's puffs of dust that look like Maltesers floating along the hospital floor. Every time a cupboard opens, it sounds like the crackle of chocolate. Hi, lads. I'm speaking very softly because I'm currently at a restaurant. It's my cousin's confirmation. People keep asking me about my dad. Telling me they're sorry. Say I have his eyes, I'm feeling scratchy. I need to know what's going on at my shows. Are we halfway through dinner? After I started, there was a gap of time where I had nothing to do. I started playing with the forks and knives. I was on episode 10. I was left on a cliffhanger again. I held on to a fork, feeling the weight of it in my hands. If I concentrated hard enough, it could easily pass for a remote control. Not just any remote control. But a Sky TV remote control <laughs> that had full access to all Sky movies and television series. That's why I'm in this bathroom. I had to watch the next episode. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I won't let you down. Thank God I brought headphones. Absolutely nothing feels better than potting plants when you're drunk. <laughs> I like the feeling of soil. I like to wedge it in between my fingers. I like scratching it out of my nails. My man needed some help in the garden, and I didn't want to know him that I was drunk at 10 a.m., so I nodded and followed her out to the garden. Trying not to say anything. 
She handed me a bag of bulbs, said, they're narcissists. They're big and showy. She was mumbling something in my ear about the origins of these flowers, but I was concentrating on the sprout that had popped out of the bulb in my hand, young and green. I like this, I said to myself. I started kneading the soil, feeling the wet soil in between my fingers. My ma said, there are some types of narcissists that can be used to treat Alzheimer's, and there are some types that can be poisonous. <laughs> I wanted to eat it. I wanted to lay in it. I wanted to be buried in it. I did something with my mom today. She wanted help sewing a dress that she'd had for ages. At first, I didn't want to help. I felt heavy and I just wanted to sit and watch something. But I felt. She was teaching me about prostituting, patchwork, and all the deadly types of needles. I was hooking my needling right to left into all sorts of material. It felt good. I felt like I was doing something productive, I think is the word I'm looking for. And my mom keeps nagging at me. And I'm having a great time, but with every stitch I could feel this snagging feeling in my stomach. My phone was in the other room. I wanted to see if anybody had messaged me. It had only been about ten minutes. I'm having a great time, don't get me wrong, but I can feel it in my stomach. I wanted to upload a video of me doing some sewing. Show my followers, you know. They would be so impressed. I would get such nice praise out of them today. But I was having a nice time with my mom. We live in the same house, but I feel like I'd never see her. I never wear them now. Slicing the needle through cotton. My mom keeps talking to me, but all I can think about is how nice the light is on my hands and how this would be the perfect moment for Instagram. Oh shit, the sunlight is fucking dazzling on my needle. My mom is asking me about jobs. She's asking how I'm doing without my dad. She's saying she is very upset about this all. I don't need this. She misses him. Fuck it. I got it when I grabbed it. But when I got back, the sunlight had gone. My thread had unraveled. My mom disappeared. And my phone had died. Hey guys. So, I've just been to the doctor. And well, he basically told me I'm about to explode. First, he asked about my diet, and I said, my foodie diary is on all my socials. But he didn't have time to check my empire. <laughs> I have like 10 million followers. He wasn't impressed. He nodded, and then started poking and prodding me. And then, when he was finished, he turned around to little old me, and he said that my body was unhealthy. Unhealthy! He told me that my body was under too much stress and that my diet would have to change. Have you seen my figure? <laughs> well, then he started asking me questions. Do you lack, have any headaches? Or muscle pain? <laughs> no? Well, sometimes after breakfast, good lucky charms may lean into the Irish stereotype, but God, they're addictive. Mm -hmm. Do you lack motivation? <laughs> I have a duty to finish each and every last delicious bite. Mm -hmm. And can you tell me a little bit about your family's medical history? <laughs> this is a load of bollocks! I am not unhealthy! I am not stressed! I know exactly what I eat, when and where! <laughs> You're way out of line, Doc! I take better care of my body than half the people that walk in here. And millions, millions watch me. You have no right to ask me.
me that. I'm not, I'm not unhealthy. I'm just hungry. I have this, this red hot burning sensation in the pit of my stomach. It's, it's this, 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 this aching, this nauseating feeling of dread, and I don't know how it got there. And I don't know how to get rid of it. M maybe it was the dandelions. <laughs> maybe I should bring some to my dad. <laughs> Guys, you are not going to believe what I just got. The most perfect cake in the entire history of cakes. Whoever made this was definitely thinking of me. Ah, here it is! Sugar. Hidden in the gaps of your teeth. <laughs>